Welcome to Our Lady of Lourdes Parish in Massapequa Park, New York. I'm Monsignor Jim Lasanti, welcoming you to celebrate with us Passion Sunday, also known as Palm Sunday, a time which we focus on the suffering, death, and sacrifice of our Lord. Let's begin our prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, the Lord be with you. With your spirit. To better celebrate Mass, let's look into our hearts and confess our sins. God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, forgive us our sins and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. And so we pray. Let us pray for a closer union with Jesus Christ during this holy, holy season. Almighty and ever-living God, you have given the human race Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. He's a model for us of true humility. He fulfilled your will by becoming man and giving his life for us on the cross. Help us to bear witness to you by following his example of suffering sacrificially and make us worthy to share one day in his glorious resurrection. And we ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue, that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned my back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spinning and spitting. The Lord God is my help. Therefore, I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of a God, did not regard equality with God, something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. As soon as morning came, the chief priests with the elders and the scribes, that is, the whole Sanhedrin, held a council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply. You say so. The chief priests accused him of many things. Again Pilate questioning, questioned him. Have you no answer? See how many things they accuse you of. Jesus gave him no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, he used to release to them one prisoner whom they requested. A man called Barabbas was then in prison, along with the rebels who had committed murder in a rebellion. The crowd came forward and began to ask him to do for them as he was accustomed. Pilate answered, do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? For he knew that it was out of envy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate again said to them in reply, Then what do you want me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted again, Crucify him. Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder, Crucify, Crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas to them, and after he had Jesus scourged, handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is, the praetorium, and assembled the whole cohort. They clothed him in purple, and weaving a crown of thorns, placed it on him. They began to salute him with Hail, Hail King, King, of, the King of the Jews, and kept striking his head with a reed spitting upon him. They knelt before him in homage, and when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him out to crucify him. They pressed into service a passerby, Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. They brought him to the place of Golgotha, which is translated place of the skull. They gave him wine, drugged with myrrh, but he did not take it. They, then they crucified him and divided his garments by casting lots for them to see what each should take. 
It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the King of the Jews. With him they crucified two revolutionaries, one on his right and one on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, Ah, you who, you who destroy, destroy, the destroy the temple and rebuild, and rebuild it in three days, in three days save, save yourself, yourself by, by coming down, down from the cross. cross. Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes mocked him among themselves and said, He saved, he saved others, others he cannot, cannot save, save himself. himself. Let, Let the Christ, Christ, the King of Israel, come down, come down now from the cross, that, that we may see and believe. And believe. Those who were crucified with him also kept abusing him. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three o'clock, Jesus cried out, which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who had heard it said, Look, he is calling Elijah. One of them ran, soaked a sponge with wine, and put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink. Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to take him down. Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. The veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. When the centurion who stood facing him saw how he breathed his last, he said, Truly this man was the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. On this Passion Sunday, we come together to reflect on the incredible sacrifice, the choice Jesus made to die for you and me. Uh, I'd like to talk about the readings for just a moment and go to that Old Testament reading, the prophet Isaiah. Have you ever had in your life, have you been blessed to have somebody who you knew, no matter what the circumstance, always had your back? I mean, they weren't partially involved in your life. They were completely there for you. Someone you could count on and believe in, that's really what we're hearing from Isaiah, that in Jesus we have someone who took it all for us and was willing to bear unbearable pain out of love. Some years ago on our Personally Speaking show, we had the actor Jim Caviezel, who you may remember played Jesus in the movie The Passion of the Christ. And he said, just as an actor acting out the suffering and death of Jesus, he was overwhelmed by the agony he experienced, knowing that he as an actor was not about to die, but that Jesus, in fact, went through that agony and much, much more. Why? Because of his personal love for you and me. And in that second reading, St. Paul to the Philippians, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave. You know, I think many of us talk about love. And when we talk about love, we're speaking about conditional love. I love you if or when or but. But I think what St. Paul is saying to us is that we have in Jesus an unconditionally loving Savior who loves us always and forever, no matter what. There is nothing you have ever done, there's nothing you will ever do that is beyond the scope of his mercy and his willingness to embrace and embrace and embrace you and me, sinful as we are, again and again. Such is the depth of his love. And what's the lesson for you and me? That if we say we love people, we've got to love like Jesus, emptying ourselves in service to them. That's what he did. That's what we celebrate today. And finally, the passion that we just listened to. Those of you who know me know that I've always called Passion Sunday the Feast of Fickleness. Why do I say that? Let's go to the, the setting of what's going on. Remember, he comes to Jerusalem this day and is warmly welcomed by large crowds who sing Hosanna and wave palm branches to show, as we might use confetti, that he was their man. They were making him the king. They wanted him to be successful. He was everything they hoped for. And this day, they celebrate his life and they're all on his side. By this Friday, Good Friday, that same crowd will chant, crucify him. Now we can look back 2000 years and think, what awful people to be with him on Sunday and then within five days to turn on him so completely. But I'm gonna suggest that the sin of the people of Jerusalem is also our sin. That we have a tendency to say so many things that we don't necessarily mean or don't have the fidelity to live out what we promise to live. How many people in terms of marriage have said, I will love you in good times and in bad and sickness and in health all the days of my life, only to find themselves often in marriage having to compromise the promises they made. 
How many of us in the course of our life have prayed the Lord's Prayer? Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And do we mean it? Lord, I want your mercy and forgiveness, and I promise to share it with others. But how many of you have not told me, you know, I'd like to forgive, but there are just some people in my life, sorry, it's never going to happen. Isn't that the same as what the people did 2,000 years ago? Jesus, we're with you. Hosanna, you're the man. Count on us. And then by Friday singing, crucify him, crucify him. We say so many things. You know, I see people when they have a newborn and they can't say enough about how much they're going to love this child and how much it means to them. And then, you know, sometimes I'll go to shopping malls and I'm intrigued when I see a parent who's completely lost it with a child who is screaming into the child's face and saying the most ungodly things. And I wish I had a video for them of what they first said when they found out they were having that child. Now granted, parenting isn't easy and we can all lose our patience. But the point is we say a whole lot of things that are so incongruous with what we promised. And I think we're called on by Passion Sunday to say, I don't wanna be those people who sing to our Lord, Hosanna, you're the man, on Palm Sunday, waving that symbolic palm as we do in church, only to be part of the crowd at Golga who think and say, we're not with you anymore. Crucify him, crucify him. It sounds cold and callous and evil what those people did, but I'm afraid there are lots of times, lots of times, when you and me, we say things, we promise things, we mean to do what we don't do, which is to follow through and to be faithful. We have a God who is eternally faithful to us. I think Palm Sunday, this feast of fickleness, when we say one thing and do another, is a reminder to us to renew our promises to those we love and to Jesus himself. Not I'm with you, Lord, occasionally. Not I'm with you in times of good. Not I'm a tepid Catholic Christian. But Lord, I'm all in. I'm all in. And I take as my model and my example, you, but when he promised to be there for me from beginning to end, fulfilled his promise on the cross, and ultimately, by next week, fulfilled his promise by conquering the greatest fear we've got, the fear of death. Amen, amen. How thankful should we be that we have a Jesus who follows through. Wouldn't it be great if this Passion Sunday, you and I could renew our own promises to our faith, to the people we love, and to our God, and live as he did toward us, ever faithful, ever true. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son, begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, one in being with the Father, through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now with confidence in that same unconditionally loving God, let's turn to him with our prayers of petition that all Christians may embrace the joy of this Holy Week with a commitment to repent of past sins and strive for holiness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That church leaders may proclaim with courage and conviction the gospel of Christ crucified. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That world leaders may reflect the sovereignty of Christ as they work to eliminate unnecessary suffering from their countries, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. That those in our parish and family members, members who are ill may enjoy the consolation of the Lord and the presence of their loved ones, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all who have died, 
We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of this Mass. Intentions of Monsignor Jim Lasanti and Celia Lasanti, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for any intentions that you and I might have in the privacy of our hearts, this is the moment to think about those times and to ask our Lord to hear us. And let's take all of our special intentions and give them over to our advocate, the Mother of God, that woman who stood fearlessly on the foot of the cross, watching her son die, and who loves us always in his memory. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity. Cleanse me from all of my sin. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice will be found acceptable to God, our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands to the praise and the glory of his name for our good and the good of all his church. Lord, may the suffering and death of Jesus, your only Son, make us pleasing to you. Alone we know we can do nothing, but may this perfect sacrifice win us your mercy and your love. And we ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we dwell always and everywhere to give you thanks and praise through Jesus Christ, who is our brother and our Lord. Though he was sinless, he suffered willingly for us who were sinners. And though he was innocent, he accepted death to save us who are guilty. By his dying, he has destroyed our sins. By his rising, he has raised us up to a new holiness of life. And so we praise you, Lord, with all the angels as we join now in their song of joy. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. Father, we acknowledge your greatness and all your actions show your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own likeness and you set us over the whole world to serve you over all creatures. Even when we disobeyed you and lost your friendship, you did not abandon us to the power of death but helped all people to seek and to find you. Again and again you offered a covenant to us and through the prophets taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you so loved the world that in the fullness of time you sent your only Son to be our Savior. He was conceived through the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Blessed Virgin Mary, a man like us in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation. To prisoners, freedom to those in sorrow, joy. In fulfillment of your will, he gave himself up to death, but by rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life, and that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him. 
He sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as his first gift to those who believe to complete his work on earth and to bring us the fullness of grace. Father, may the same Holy Spirit now bless and sanctify these offerings. Let them become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. He always loved those who were his own in the world. And when the time came for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, he showed the depth of that love. While they were at supper, he took bread. He blessed the bread and broke it. He gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, Jesus took a chalice filled with the fruit of the vine. Again, Father, he thanked you for your goodness, gave the chalice to his disciples and friends. And he said, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption. We recall Christ's death his descent among the dead, his resurrection, and his ascension to your right hand. And looking forward to his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the acceptable sacrifice which brings salvation to the whole world. Lord, look upon this sacrifice which you've given to your church, and by your Holy Spirit, gather all who share this one bread and one cup into the one body of Christ, a living sacrifice of praise. Lord, remember those for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, along with all the bishops, the clergy, the religious, and all of God's people. Remember those who take part in this offering, those here present, and all your people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember those who have died in the peace of Christ, and all the dead whose faith is known to you alone. In your mercy, Father, grant also to us, your children, to enter into our heavenly inheritance in the company of Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her devoted husband and spouse, and with all the apostles and martyrs and saints. And then, in your kingdom, freed from the corruption of sin and death, we shall sing your glory with every creature through Christ our Lord, through whom you give us everything that is good. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. That you and I might not be people whose feast today is a feast of fickleness, but rather mean what we say, practice what we preach, live as sincerely as Jesus did, love unconditionally. For those graces in your life and mine, we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin. Protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. 
Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you my peace, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live and reign, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Christ, with faith in your love and mercy, we eat your body and drink your blood. Let it not bring us condemnation, but health in mind and in body. My friends, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to share in everlasting life. Amen. Our spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Just a couple of announcements. Um, one would be that certainly in the New York area and I hope around the country this Monday of Holy Week there'll be a confession from 3 in the afternoon until 9 at night. A lot of priests putting in a lot of hours to be there to forgive sin. Come and bring with you your, your best sins in the sense of let's cleanse the soul so we can face our Lord on Easter Sunday with hearts renewed. That's one thing I want to mention to you. Also to uh, tell you that uh, people are debating out there to get or to not get the vaccination. Uh, the church has encouraged us to get the vaccination so that we might be safer for ourselves and for others, and that it is a sacrificially beautiful thing to do, not just for your own health, but for others as well. And then once you receive the vaccination, think about coming back to church. Uh, for those who have been away for a long time, I know you've missed the chance to come and pray with the community and, and to receive the body and blood of Jesus Please think about getting that vaccination and coming home to your parish church. And as I've said before, Our Lady of Lourdes will continue to celebrate Mass online and uh, always welcoming you to be part of our family as well. I have friends around the country who have returned to their own parish, but they still come and watch Our Lady of Lourdes too. And I'm delighted that they're doing double duty, and we thank them for that. And I just would encourage you to be with us on Easter, go to your church if you like, and then come home and watch a great Mass at Our Lady of Lourdes as well. Once again, I thank Father Kevin, I thank Father Andy for throughout the week giving us the Mass. Their wonderful faithfulness has been so well received by so many around the world, not just the country. Either way, enjoy this Holy Week in the best sense by making it a holy and wonderful and meaningful week. Now with that in mind, let's close with a prayer. 
Lord, you have satisfied our hunger with the Eucharistic food. The death of your Son gives us hope, and it also strengthens our faith. May his resurrection give us the strength, the courage, the perseverance that will lead one day to our eternal salvation. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. For Palm Sunday, for Passion Sunday, we have a special blessing. At the end of each blessing, would you please respond by saying the affirmation, Amen. The Father of mercy has given us an example of unselfish love in the sufferings of his only Son. Through your service to God and neighbor, may we always receive his countless blessings. Amen. Amen. You believe that by dying, Christ destroyed death forever. May he give us a share in everlasting life as well. Amen. Amen. He humbled himself for our sakes. May we follow his example and share one day in the glory of his resurrection. Amen. Amen. And my friends, may Almighty God bless you and your families. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our Mass is now ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God.